work so you can help others. The purpose of work is that you might provide for your family. The purpose of work is you might provide for your family. That's helping others. He says in 1 Timothy, Paul says this, if any uh, provide not for his own, especially, especially those, listen to this, for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. He says, if you don't provide for your own, for, your, uh, for others, in your own home, especially those of your own household, you have denied the faith and you're worse than an infidel. How are you going to provide for your family if you're not working? Unless you have big inheritances, which are fine. But you got to work. Even if, you, even if I had if, if I a hundred million dollars, I would still work. And you want to know why I would work? Because it's God's plan and it's good for you. It doesn't mean that you just don't work. There are so many families out there that I know that suffer because the parents aren't doing what they need to be doing. They're not the ones working. And, and, and let me tell you what, parents, we need to teach our kids how to work. We need to teach our kids how to work. Because eventually, one day, they're going to have their own families, and if they've learned from us how not to work, do you think that they're going to automatically just have this revelation of, oh, I'm just going to work now because now I have a family. If you don't provide, you're worse than an infidel. You know what an infidel is? That's an unbeliever. That's a non-believer. There, you know, there are many non-believers out there that understand their responsibility to provide for their families better than a lot of believers. Imagine that, that an unbeliever is setting the standard for work ethic. We should be out there outworking, outperforming everybody out there. There are people that outperform the Christian. Why? Why are people outperforming the Christian when we should be the ones that the world looks up to that says these people are the workers? Failure to provide for your family, in fact, becomes a denial of your faith. You've denied the faith. That's what it says. People who don't provide for their family, they're worse than an infidel, but they've denied their faith. That, that means they've, they've, they've denied their God, knowing God. You see, people, people they, 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 they hear what you say, and they, and they see what you do, and they don't harmonize. And they have to ask this question, why can a person who is created with purpose not work with the same purpose he was created with? Why is he out there doing what he does so half-heartedly? And we'll talk about that in a moment. The purpose of work is to provide for your family. The purpose of work is also to provide for the needy. Provide for the needy. And this is how you help others. Ephesians 4.28 uh, says this, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to them, to give to him that needeth. One purpose of work you do is to give to those that don't have what they need. Now, there are two different groups of people here. I want you to, be very, I want you to understand this. There are those that, that work and don't have what they need, and there's others out there who will not work and choose not to work and do not have what they need. I don't believe that that's what this group is talking about necessarily. I think there are the sloths and the sluggards out there who choose to be lazy and idle. Those people are not our responsibility under, the God, under, under Ephesians 4.28. What I think he's talking about here is those people who have need but are working. There, let's face it, there are people out there who work and have needs that are not being met. And you know what 4.28 says? He says, God has given you work so that you can work to provide for those people who have needs that are not being met. Simply, that is that God has given you the ability to meet their needs. The purpose of work is also to provide for the weak. Not just the needy, but for the weak. That's right. The purpose of, of us working is to provide for those folks that are weak. I believe that this is, this is the group of people who would rather be working but cannot work because they're weak. Not saying that they don't have strength in terms of muscles, but I'm saying that they don't have the ability. He says this in Acts uh, 20, 35, I have shown, I've showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak. 
labor, support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is similar to those that are needy, but it's referring to those that, are, that aren't able to support themselves. Not that those that are able, but those that aren't able. Let's face it, there are some people who through no fault of their own are weak and unable to work. And you know what? God has given us the ability to help them meet their needs. We're able to support them. Now, does that mean they need to drive a better car than us? Not necessarily. Okay? Not necessarily. This is not talking about some mass redistribution of wealth and we give away all of our money. That's not why I don't believe in that. I do believe that there are people out there who are incapable of working for themselves, though they would choose rather to work for themselves. But they have needs because they're weak and incapable of working. We find this again in 1 Thessalonians 5.14, where it says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. In Romans 15.1, he says, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Now here, I'll tell you this, because I really believe this. I, I, I think that we do need more programs that help people who cannot, not who do not want to, but cannot support themselves. I really believe, I really truly believe this. There, the reason why the world, why the government has taken up this chore is because the Christian has, has, has not uh, borne that responsibility. Listen, why does the world provide the food pantries and the homeless shelters? I'm not saying that I'm going to go build a food pantry and a homeless shelter. What I am saying is this that because we don't meet the needs of people when we have the ability to meet their needs, the world has picked it up and done it. And you know what? They're not given the gospel at these food pantries, and you know it as well as I do. They're not coupling the gospel message with food. They're not doing it. They're not giving out a heaven tract. They're not telling people that the power of God unto salvation is the gospel. They're not telling people that. They're not telling people the good news of Jesus Christ. What they're out there doing is they're giving them a can of this and a, and a box of that and they're sending them on their way. They're not doing it the way we ought to be doing it. But we have not done it. Because we are not supporting the weak. And we are not helping the needy. Most people in, 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 in the world, in government, they're, they're, they're enabling those people that actually do have the ability to work but choose not to. And that's where it's falling apart. They're not doing it right. They're going about it the wrong way. And so we as a church do have a responsibility to help these people. I'm not saying every person that walks down the street and holds his hand out, you give them $20. I'm saying that there are truly people out there that need help. And we have not done a good job at helping them. And so what you find is you find other people picking it up and they're not doing a good job at it either. We should be helping the hungry and the homeless and the veterans.